Welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Mind Behind, Make More, Work Less. Hi, my name is Fong Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also a best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on Unlocking the Mind, we talk about another kind of bias. And the reason why I do this show is so that we can learn to better make decisions, how we, our minds work, and maybe get into better relationships, negotiate better, and sometimes even avoid falling into cognitive traps. For today's cognitive bias, I'm going to be introducing less is better. Why is this important? Because sometimes we don't just want more, 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 more things. Sometimes less is in fact more, less is in fact better. And there's been a lot of cases from a vendor's point of view, from a seller's point of view, where less in fact is absolutely better. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions. For instance, have you ever struggled to find that perfect gift for a house warning, warming situation? or a gift for a thank you. How much should you spend? What should you buy? And also, would that person actually appreciate it and actually value what you actually got them? Another question is, have you ever been sitting down and writing out your resume, your cover letter, or even writing copy for your website? And then all of a sudden you sit there going, you know what, I need to add more experience. I need to add more skill sets. I need to add more, 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 more. And all of a sudden you end up with a page of text and because you wanted to add more information so that you could get people to read, know more about you and read more about you. And my third question is, if you were uh, presented with these two ice cream options, which one would you buy? Bucket A or bucket B? So that is in fact a less is more or less is better scenario. If you picked B, well, guess what? There's actually less ice cream in this one than there is in this one. If you look at the size of these ice cream circles, you actually get a lot less here than you would here. And therefore, when it comes to a vendor, it's actually beneficial for them to offer less when it's relatively more inside that bucket of um, uh, container. So therefore, less is more in this case and less is better for the vendor. Now, over the years, there's been a lot of different case studies, a lot of different surveys that actually showcases the fact that less is better. In 1998, a person, a professor in the University of Chicago, Christopher C., actually asked and surveyed a whole bunch of people with regards to what would they actually appreciate more? A gift where it is a scarf that's worth $45 or a gift where it's a jacket that's worth $50 or $55. And the thing is, uh, more people actually wanted that gift of a scarf, uh, more so than something that was actually more uh, valuable, which is $55 of that jacket. And the reason being, well, scarves are usually in a category that will range between $5 to $50, whereas a jacket is in a category that's worth between $50 to $500. So when you're receiving that scarf that's worth $45, which is at the high range of that uh, of that category, then people go, wow, look at this value that I'm getting. So the thing is, you're looking at the perceived value from that category. So it might be even more beneficial to you if you're getting a gift, a high ticket item in a low ticket category versus a low ticket item in a high ticket category, where at, which is what a jacket would be if it's only $55. But in fact, if you're giving a gift, you're actually saving $10 this is a case of less is better. Later on, there was another survey done where you could pick between two sets of utensils. One set is 24 pieces with everything pristine in great condition. Another set is 32 pieces, but three of the pieces are kind of deteriorated and kind of defective. However, the remaining of it is all pristine. More people would actually prefer the 24 set piece because of how it was presented. Again, the thing is, you're actually getting less. Only three pieces, well, you still get 29 pieces that are actually in pristine shape. But more likely than not, people will choose the 24 piece set. Less is better, again, for the vendor. In 1994, there was a survey done by Max Bazerman, and this was a survey asked to a whole bunch of university students asking them, who would you rather work for? employer A, who would be offering you $25 an hour, where everybody else in the same skill set in the same role will also be getting 25 bucks an hour, or employee B, who will be offering you $35 an hour, but everybody else in the same skill sets in the same role are actually making $40, $45 an hour. 
what's surprising is most of the survey uh, uh, results that came in was that most people would actually want to work for that company that would pay them $25 an hour because of equality, because of the feel and the values of that place. But in fact, from the vendor's point of view, they're paying you less. It's actually $10 per hour less than that other person. So again, less is more. In 1995, Victoria Hosted actually asked another question to a whole bunch of athletes whether they would want to win a bronze medal or a silver medal. And the consensus came back was they rather win this bronze medal versus a silver medal. And because the mentality is winning the bronze medal is because you had this thought of, I almost won absolutely nothing. So winning something was absolutely great and you feel happy and you're ecstatic about winning the bronze medal. Whereas for those people who win the silver medal, they have this feeling of loss only a little bit more and they would have got gold, but they've lost the gold and they settled for silver. So the happiness value is actually higher when you get less, which is the bronze medal. Another scenario would be for lots of vendors, it's actually more advantageous for them to offer something free that's of less value than something else that's potentially a better deal. You can see this in lots of car dealerships and, uh, and, and dealerships because they would offer you a free oil change or a free tank of gas or a free set of floor mats and people will be more receptive of that than to get an offer of getting 50% uh, off all oil chains for life. But the thing is, if you actually look at it and calculate it through a longer period of time, you're probably getting more value with that discount than getting that free uh, set of floor mats. Again, less is better for a car dealership because the clients are actually more appreciative of something that's actually less in value. Recently, I had somebody come up to me and ask me, hey, can you look at my cover letter and also my resume and tell me what you think? Well, I grabbed their resume, grabbed their cover letter, looked through it quickly and said, you know what, you need to take this back and kind of delete a whole bunch of things. You don't need this, you don't need that. And in response, they were saying, no, 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 I need all this information. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to tell them again. I wanna showcase everything I can do, all my experience, all my work, all my skill sets, all on that page. And then I go, okay, fine, fair enough. I understand where you're coming from. Now you just came back from a career fair, is that correct? And they said, yes. You probably got a whole bunch of brochures and pamphlets and leaflets of information about their company, correct? He goes, yes, I'm like, good. Why don't you take all that out and lay it out on the table? Once he finished laying it all on the table, I said, you probably read this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Is that correct? And he goes, yes, how did you know? I go, these are the ones with the least amount of text and the most amount of pictures. And he goes, wow. I'm like, exactly. If you look at your cover letter, what do you think your employee, potential employer is going to think? Wow, look at all this text. It's overwhelming. So therefore, in this case, again, less is better. You're able to be more concise, you're able to engage with your audience better, and you're able to get their attention better because you're not bombarding, bombarding them with too much stuff. Another survey was done with a whole bunch of speakers. And the question being asked to them was, if you knew you had 50 people who's gonna to come to your event, what kind of venue would you want? Would you want one that has 50 or less uh, spots in capacity or you have one that is a hundred and more capacity and more likely than not they're going to choose the smaller room because the perception is that they sold out the place they filled it up to the brim and so many people want to get in and that picture and that that perception is so much better than to have a bigger venue that looks half empty so from a speaker's point of view you may actually want less is better because it gives you a better perception of um, of value, a better perception of filling up the space. And most recently for me, I was able to work on an exercise that absolutely proves that less is better. So for this exercise, I was told to work on an introduction video. Not, no more than two minutes, no less than 90 seconds. So after coming up with the script, having all this content in there, coming up with stories, coming up with videos, and also uh, little pictures and whatnot, I, I was thinking, my, man, this is going to come out to be three to four minutes long, which is way too long for the introduction video that I actually want to create. So then I sat down, 
cut out a whole bunch of stuff, change a whole bunch of different wording, and uh, found out more effective ways to get my message across. Instead of saying a certain line, I might just flash a image up. Instead of using this sentence, I might just say one word that represents that whole sentence. After a good exercise down to the bone, we were down to 90 seconds with an impactful video that is more uh, engaging and more exciting and people actually stay and watch the whole thing and got the entire message. So that is another case where less is more. So by looking at all these different examples, how you don't wanna have too much information, you don't wanna have uh, too much stuff, too much, uh, too much content or too much knowledge or too much uh, free giveaways, you may want to just think about what is the case where less is better? What is the case where less is actually more? Sometimes you have to step back and go, what is that little free thing I can give that will actually get more appreciation, more value, more perceived value from my customer? And next time you go and find that uh, perfect gift for a housewarming or perfect gift for your loved one, maybe you might get more, uh, more appreciation by buying that $20, $30 box of chocolates instead of a $20, $30 uh, diamond ring. So again, that is again, less is more. And the thing is, if you are looking at certain scenarios, you might wanna uh, calculate the long-term effects of the other option to see if less is in fact better to kind of save yourself from um, savings or save yourself from falling into the less is better scenario. So I hope you enjoy this video on less is better. And if you like this video, please go back on my other, um, on my other Unlocking the Mind uh, shows because we have a lot of different cognitive uh, bias uh, themes. And also come look at my other shows, which is the Master Mind Bites, the Make More Mind Bites, and also the uh, the PP Potential Success Show, where every single week we have lot new episodes coming up. And thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for your likes, your comments. I love seeing your comments. So until next time, today is the day to unlock your potential. We'll see you later.